Welcome. How are you, sir? <laughs> I'm great. Yeah, very good to see you, Ken. I'm great at 88. You too, you look amazing. All right. Hey, it's Lou Pimber, author of the book, Breaking Badly. It's out on Amazon. It's about forgiveness. It's about being a protector. About It's about being an undercover drug agent. It's about success as an entrepreneur, success in life, right? But today, I am honored to be here today at the Fallen Warriors Memorial with the artists who painted all these amazing pictures. So thank you for tuning in. Now's a good time to subscribe, by the way, and share this video. Uh, you're in for a treat. All right, I want to introduce you to the artist, the, the man with the vision, the man who started this, this, this whole memorial. Ken, this is Ken Pritchard. Ken, it's very honored to meet you and see you once again, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you so much for your cause, for your, for your, your heartfelt uh, passion to do this. Um, How did you get started in, this, in, this, in, in painting these, these men, these warriors' faces? Well, in July the 12th, 2010, I was asked to paint a portrait of Wesley Ridge, and I went and I painted it. Uh, I'm a poor man's Norman Rockwell. Uh, he was a Gulf Coast fisherman, a whitewater raptor. He was a mudder. Anything fast, dirty, and dangerous, he left to do. That was the day, July the 12th, 2010. And uh, I tried to give that big one to the family, and they said, no, we'd like a, a smaller one, 18 by 24, because that would fit better in our home. And that was the day, July the 12th, 2010, that we, that uh, they were having Jesse Ainsworth's funeral up here in Houston. Now, you wouldn't see any of this unless that happened that day because someone tapped me on the shoulder. They said, Ken, you're going to have to paint him. Well, really what I wanted to do was paint him and get the heck out of there and go back home and paint John Wayne and Willie and Waylon and boys. And then it just kept going and going. And then a lady called me from Hull, Texas and said, I would like for you to paint a portrait of my son, Sean Touche. He was a bull rider and a football player. And then everything just took off. So Ken, let, let me pause you for a minute. So when you got started in this, you, you were, obviously you were a painter, you were an artist, right? But you were painting other things. And, and someone just came to you one day and they said, listen, this is, this is my son, can you paint him? When he gave you the picture of his son, did you know at that time that his son had, had passed? No, I refused him. You said no. I, I'm not a portrait artist. Okay, okay, I see. Okay. That's what a lot of artists yeah, do. Yeah, okay? they yeah. They say, no, I can't do that. Because, you know, I didn't really realize that uh, uh, portrait artists are the cream of the crop. Yeah. And I didn't know that Okay. Uh, at the time. I was just uh, trying to cope with what was going on. And I, I uh, saw... And the, the family came and hugged my neck. Okay, that's the, that's the part that got me. <laughs> and shook my hand and says, you know, this is the greatest thing that's ever happened to us. Yeah. You know, it's the closest we'll ever have yeah. to having our son back home with us. Wow. When I come in here, I feel like I'm in a, um, like, sacred ground. Like, I see these guys. Their spirit too. Oh. <laughs> it's hard for me. It's hard for me yeah. to see that. Well, we so, want people to, to leave here with a feeling uh, that they know a little bit about Shane. Okay? Let's go look at Shane. All right. He was a, and, and his father is a famous attorney here in Houston. Okay. Uh, and uh, his name is, is his name, James Moriarty. And, uh, and these three guys uh, were going through the uh, gate, the front gate. You went through a lot of them. You went through the front gate, and they were all three murdered uh, in Jordan. I see. His father, being a fantastic attorney, went over there and sued the state of Jordan and won. Wow, okay. okay. Wow. Uh, this one up here is from Florida. This one is from Minnesota, and this one is from Houston, Texas. I see. And uh, got it. They, uh, they were, they were all really heroes in, uh, in my mind. Wow. These people 
that you see in here are my sons and daughters because they have since become my family. I, I believe it. You come here every single day, right? And you're nearly every day. These men, these images, they're looking right back at you. And it, I walk through here, and as I mentioned earlier, I feel like I'm on hollowed ground because, you know, uh, you can't deny their existence. In more, and, and there's no, you have to appreciate, you know, their sacrifice. And what you did in these paintings, you depict them not only as soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines, but also. Like in this picture here, you, you yeah, depict how do you like them. That much? I love it. You depict them. Like you depict them as a as is this him as a boy? Yeah, that's him as a boy. Okay. And his dad used to love to go out. Okay. Uh, in in the back, uh, and uh, and uh, play soldier. You know. Yeah. This is him when he was home on leave. Uh, I could talk about this uh, for another hour. Mm. These people are truly. Our family. She is a, a, a meticulous attention to detail, and I'm sure she's a key player in this whole organ, this yeah, whole part, right? I'm a teacher. You're a teacher. <laughs> yes. She, she, she was. Uh, she has a, a, high, a, a, a middle school named after her over here. Wow. Okay. okay. Carolyn Spillane Middle okay. School. Okay. Okay. I went over there okay? and 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 made a speech one day, uh, quite unexpected. Yeah. But the kids were just amazing. The, the little girls hugged my neck, and the little boys <laughs> shook my hand. I, I went and talked to people in the, the the kids in the art yeah the, in the art class, you know. <laughs> yeah. On my phone, I taught them a little bit. And yeah. It was just an amazing, amazing time. Incredible. She has left. <clears throat> she's one of our greatest educators that's ever been. Because <clears throat> she started. She started the uh, Air Force ROTC. You did, program. okay, okay, okay. Inside I mean, it would have never been if it hadn't been for this young lady. Wow. Right here. Okay, okay, okay. I knew you were special when I met you, Carolyn. Tell me a little bit about Lutz, uh, looks like his first lieutenant, Jonathan Rozier, United States Army Operation Iraqi Freedom, originally from Katy, Texas. Looks like he was killed in action, July 19, two thousand and three. Tell That's me about. Correct. Tell me the story. So the, the this is a story about the pic painting itself. Okay. It not, jo not just about the man. Okay, okay. But in the, in the portrait, Ken has painted Jonathan the last time he was home holding his infant son. Okay. And he was about nine months old at that point. That okay. was when he saw him last. When, uh, I think his name's David, but when he turned, was ready to turn 15 two or three years ago, um, he, his mother said, what would you like for your birthday present? And he said, I'd like to drive the car that my dad drove. Mm. Everything of his dad's was precious to him. Yes. And so mom had the serial number, the VIN number. She put it out on the internet, and lo and behold, the car was located in Utah. They f and so the car had been sold at one point. Oh, they, she never had any idea where it was. And, and how long had it been since the car had been he sold? He was getting ready to be 15, and the last time he saw his dad, he was nine months old. 99. Okay. Yeah. So they found the car, and of course, it was old and not yeah. in good shape. Yeah. So she wanted to buy it and get it restored and give it to him as a surprise yes. on his 15th birthday. And some um, a veteran got wind of what she was trying to do. Okay. Man, when the veterans get involved, they get it done. They wow. ended up helping her get that car purchased, wow. restored, and that young man got that car for his 15th birthday. Wow. So that's what Ken's portrait is about. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Not, it's something that happened after he passed away. Right. The other thing about him that's important is that the um, American Legion Hall in Katy is named after him. Jonathan Rozier. Wouldn't be right if we didn't share the story of a very well-known Texan, uh, a Navy SEAL sniper, killed not in action, but killed in service of others here in Texas, helping serve his fellow veterans. So the story of Chris Kyle right here. Uh, Ken, how did you come across this opportunity to paint this? Someone just came up to you and said, you want this one done, or did you meet the family? Or what's the story about? No, no. Uh, in fact, she doesn't have it. Friend of his. Okay. I tried to, but I, I haven't been able to get in touch with him okay. all these years. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, I just, uh, I, I just thought it was a, a good story. And uh, uh, a congressman, Babin, uh, of Texas, uh, had me uh, do this painting right here for his I see. place here in, in Texas. Got it. And uh, 
and now he's in Washington. So uh, I have it on the wall here. This is Chris Kyle's wall. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's been so much since I've been here. I appreciate you guys so much, just so you guys know. I know we're not done, but I have to hear the story of Jeremy, Lance Corporal Jeremy Burris, United States Marine Corps. Uh, this, this kid here was, uh, uh, he was a, uh, as you can see, he was a guitar picker in a church band. His family went all over uh, with a, a little band that, that went to the churches and sang. His mom has the most beautiful voice you can even imagine. Uh, and uh, and uh, he, uh, he was, uh, it, the friend of his uh, ran over an IED. Mm. He went back to hell. And mm. uh, they blew up another IED and killed him. Mm. That's the reason he, he passed away. You can uh, see the father and the mother. They've been on uh, TV with me many times. Uh, the Texas Country Reporter uh, has a story that, that we spent a day doing. Wow. And it, it's a fantastic story. Wow. His wow. father has the same blue eyes. Wow. Uh, the story of John Chapman. A lot of people know this gentleman's story. Air Force, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know he was from Waco, Texas, just so you know. Yeah. So this whole memorial, if you guys didn't pick it up yet, is all is to memorialize fallen soldiers from Texas. Okay, so we have John Chapman, U.S. Air Force. I believe he was a, uh, a, a combat controller, I think he was, if I'm wrong. Yeah, he repelled out of helicopters. And, and yeah, so he was, atta he was attached to a, a SEAL team, right? Yeah. And he was, this is the only story captured on film where it captures how a, 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 a recipient of a Medal of Honor what he did to earn that medal. There was a drone. This is it. Above. There was a yes. drone above. Yes. That, and and it was it was not recognized until uh, Trump became president. And yeah. he said, Hey, we gotta do something about this. And he had the family there. Yes. And he gave them the Medal of Honor. Yeah. Because this this guy was left behind, but it, it they they thought he was dead. You yeah. Know? But he got up and he uh, wiped out many enemy, uh, many of the enemy. Yes. And he was shot 27 times yep. before he passed away. Uh, and, uh, and that was the Look, I highly encourage everyone, anyone, everyone to look up the story of John Chapman, U.S. Air Force. Incredible story of a Medal of Honor recipient caught on video. We have these boots right here. And oftentimes, you know, when a soldier passes away, that's... This is what they used to memorialize them. Do, what's the story on these boots? Well, the story on these is there's 13. These were the 13 that were killed in Kabul. Okay. Okay. The reason I painted the 13 is that this one is from Texas. Is a Marine from Texas. Do we yeah. know Do we know his name? Uh, David Espinosa. David Espinosa, okay. David Espinosa. From Loreto, Texas, okay. Wow. Yeah, she knows everything. And, and, uh, and anyway, I painted this, and then we got portraits of each and every one. We sent those to the families that are all over the country. Wow. We sent those to the families along with a, a print of this. Wow, okay? wow, wow. And to all the uh, American legions in their areas. I okay? see. So once again, these are the 13 that were killed in Kabul. That was Correct. not too not too long ago. When right? we were pulling out. When we were pulling out. Land, yeah. That was very recent. And and uh, this gentleman is Espin uh, Marine Espinosa yeah. from Laredo, Texas. This is a letter from the from David Berger, General United States Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marines. It says, Dear Mr. Pridgen, thank you for painting, for the painting of the 13 fallen warriors who lost their lives. In Kabul, Afghanistan. This is Marines feel that every loss very deeply, and the painting is a wonderful tribute Would you like me to finish? Yeah. 
I give a hug now, okay? <laughs> now you know what it's like. <laughs> hmm? Go ahead. Marines feel every loss very deeply, and the painting is a wonderful tribute to the courage and sacrifice each of these war and history bodies. I know the families of these fallen heroes appreciate your passion for using your artistic talent to honor the memories of their loved ones. You are doing important work memorializing the fine men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. Thank you for sharing your gift in such a valuable way. Send your Dr. David H. Berger, General U.S. Marine Corps, Commandant of the Marine Corps. Wow, I love it. Thank you so much. R. Smith, also a recipient of the Medal of Honor for Valor. Um, tell me the story. Well, this is the Army Medal of Honor. They're different than yes. that in the Air Force, uh, but this kid uh, was, uh, they were in a compound, and as you know, the compounds are, are in here, and the mountains are around here, and they can just shoot down on you and, and attack you from all different ways. Well, they were going to take over the compound here, and had it pretty well done, but uh, uh, Smith said, no, no, not on my watch. He went out. He got on a <clears throat> on a uh, vehicle with a a uh, machine gun on top, and they said they could they could hear it as it went down, and 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 took care of the people attacking from the from the the, the ground, and then it would go up and shoot the one in the buildings, you know. Yeah. And uh, when it ceased, they were they were all saved and out of the uh, compound. This painting here of Sergeant William, was it Mewison, is, uh, you say you have a story behind this. Tell me the story. Yeah, well, his sister here asked me to paint this portrait. Okay. So I gathered it up and, and got uh, him having a good time. Yes. As much as I could. Uh, and, uh, and when I finished this painting, uh, his found out his family was living in London, England. Okay. And, uh, and but they got in touch with them, and uh, they came here to Baytown and to pick up the painting, and they told the story of Bill, okay? How he had volunteered for a mission that he shouldn't have volunteered for. Yeah. And went out to protect his lieutenant, you know, and they got hit by an, IED, uh, by, uh, an RPG. Mm -hmm. uh, their vehicle was destroyed. And, uh, and the lieutenant was uh, badly injured. And Bill went up on the roof and took a machine gun and he uh, quelled the enemy. And he, uh, he came back down. Him and his corporal were left. And uh, he said, well, our, we don't have the vehicle, and the lieutenant is uh, badly injured. We need to put him in the back of a truck here and take him back to the, uh, the, the aid station. Well, they didn't have any communication, nothing, and they took off back to the, to the uh, lines, the uh, American lines, and when they got back to, to the gate, they had no communication just for him. Wow. Just knocked the whole top off the truck and killed him and his corporal. Mm. But uh, his mom said the only way that we knew about it was uh, that the, the lieutenant survived. Mm. And he told us the story. Mm. That's the story of wow. the Wow. Wow. Incredible. Join the crew. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for paying. Thank you for paying their stories, man. Thank you so much for paying their stories. Tell you a little bit about how their families become your family. Yes. This one has become part of mine, or part of me too. David Todd. David Todd. David Todd Jr. from San Antonio. Uh, I don't want to even know the story exactly of how he died, but I want him to know about David. And David was a wonderful son. 
He is a junior. He looks exactly like his father. He looks exactly like Senior. Wow. And Mom and Dad went to the um, city council in San Antonio and got a bridge, a, one of those bridges over the river down there, named in his honor. Okay. And I think she was working on getting others named in honor of the other some of the other ones that were killed that were from San Antonio. Okay. But the favorite part of my, the story that Ken told me about, and the mother and dad verified, was that he was in the desert building a barbecue grill. In okay. the desert, out of cinder block. And the boy said, what are you going to do with that? And he said, when I'm finished, I'm going to cook you all some steaks. Well, they got a big old laugh out of that. Okay. The steak showed up, and he cooked steaks. <laughs> out now, the field, out the field I steaks. I know that you can get some things on the war, in the war front. Not fast. a lot. Not this fast. stuff. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, I had an experience where we got something over there real fast at Christmas time for a group of guys. Okay. And I thought, Mom, got that flash frozen steak, so they're just in time for him <laughs> to cook them. No. They told me that they stole them from the officer's mess <laughs> and popped my bubble. I thought he was so sweet doing it. But Mom said all he ever, Ken said, but Mom said all he ever wanted was coffee because he was known for having a hot cup of steaming coffee beside him no matter what he was doing. And so that little cup right there has the seen cup. it. It's a big part, plays a big part in his story. I, I notice every painting, there is significance to everything in it. And, and there is heart and soul in every single painting. It is their heart and soul, but also the heart and soul of Ken. Oh, yeah. When, and when it, it's it's, it's going to be your legacy, Ken. This is your legacy, my friend. Um, Matt Worrell, we had a couple of friends, of a family that came in who knew Matt, but also a friend who went to school with him and then was in the military 75 miles away when he was killed. Mm -hmm. And he's also from A and M, and they tell wonderful stories. The stories grow. Ken knows a lot when he paints them, but mm -hmm. they grow as people come to visit and course. start to tell stories. Of course. And of course, he he was the best at everything, according to the friend who was in the military. And he said he was the best looking. He had the best grades. He did the best on everything there was. He got the best looking girls. He got the best jobs because the best helicopter pilots are the ones that get to fly the night stalkers. The little birds, yes, right. And he said, when we found that he just made a drop and on takeoff, he was shot down. We mm. could not believe it. He said it was a gut punch in this, in mm. this one. Mm. And judging from this patch, if this is the patch he was wearing, he was probably, probably part of the uh, Special Operations Division as well. The last one. So okay. the, the evolution of the artist. The evolution of the artist. These are the hands that I learned how to paint. I see, uh, I see. It took me a year uh, studying, and you kids, you can learn this on YouTube. <laughs> That's how I did it, because I didn't have any money. So I watched YouTube and, uh, and watched the artist that I enjoyed, and this is, uh, this is what... Uh, what I've accomplished. Okay. I love it. I love it. Growing. We ran into uh, Dustin, Don, uh, Dustin Donica's mom at a luncheon. They were, Ken was asked to speak, and we, I went with him. We took about three pictures and talked about the gallery. And, the, yeah. and we took Dustin with us. And when uh, Dustin passed away, mom had been sending lots of cookies and everything to the group, to the troop. And mm -hmm. when he passed away, she kept sending them. Mm. And they, that whole group, how many guys was it? I, I can't even remember. She told us. Yeah. But they adopted her as a mom. Mm. And they, to still today, she says they're like a big family. She told the story that day in the lunch wow. to everybody of how they, they celebrate birthdays. We celebrate, we have baby showers, you know, weddings. Some of them get married. But she's still in touch with the whole group wow. of guys that were with her. Wow. wow. Now, that's a leader. Because yeah. when you have a group that stick together, after, even after they come home, yes, you know that that was a strong leader. That's right. That's right. This guy has a scholarship, uh, a fundraiser, Cyfair Educational Foundation. Okay. Has a scholarship um, fundraiser every year in his honor, mm -hmm. Jeremy Ray, mm -hmm. and raises thousands and thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. and it goes for scholarships for kids who graduate from any Cyfair high school. Wow. And we've got twelve high schools right now going on. Well, maybe we have thirteen going on fourteen. Wow. But Jeremy is the one that the scholarship things in honor of. And yes, there's a lake in the back of Jersey Village, and he used to go back there and fish. Love to do it. What's the story on this guy, Ruffton? Uh, he used to uh, he used to play football here in Houston. He was a football player here in Houston. But he, uh, all of those guys got killed. That that uh, one firefight. Okay, all of them. Wow. 
Wow. Uh, but he was known as Big Tuna because he left the skin of tuna fish everywhere he went. <laughs> and uh, everywhere he spent the night in, uh, in Iraq for rent money. <laughs> Big Tuna. I love it. That said, um, you know, we all have heroes in our life, but I was blessed I got to raise mine. Yeah. And he was something. I didn't know what a sergeant major was until this came along. It's like any uh, P9. He's a big dog of the sergeants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You never, you never stop to think that some of these guys are real, real, real heroes. They're, they're, I mean, you cannot imagine what some of these kids have done at 18 and 19 years old. Do you realize that a lot of these kids were 13 years old when the towers were hit and the war started? It's amazing. And I don't know exactly why I was put in this role. Sometimes God takes the <laughs> unqualified and make some qualified. And that's what he's done with me. When I walk through here, all I can think of is, you know, these, a lot of these were just boys with a dream to become soldiers. And they fulfill their dream, but they don't realize that at some point in time, they're actually gonna become legends. Heroes for their families. Sometimes as little boys, we, we're a little selfish as little kids, right? But as we grow up, we become selfless fighters, selfless warriors, giving up our own lives for our own people, and sometimes not even for our own people. You know, one thing I do love about the military is that we all see green. We all see camouflage. We all see, and we fight for each other. The men and women, they do it for one another. God and country, yes, but it's for them. I think we should all do our part in making sure that we, any chance we get, stop at a memorial and just give them that moment of silence and recognition for the sacrifice. They did it so that you don't have to. I hope that people watch this and share it, share it with your family, friends, because these stories need to be told. They need to be told because these men give up their lives so that their friends can live. I believe it's written in the good book. My name is Lou Pember. Thank you so much for being here today. For being here. <laughs> and my buddy Ken. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here too. Thank you.